Hey everybody, Rob here for Rob's Gaming Network, and today I'm going to run you through the Anixia Lair Raid Deck for the World of Warcraft trading card game. This was the very first raid that was released by Upper Deck Entertainment back in 2006-2007, so this deck is actually pretty old. I'd say six or seven years old. And this was designed to play against Heroes of Azeroth and Dark Portal cards. And I remember back in the day when I started this game during the... Uh, the Dark Portal booster packs, that this raid would actually take 8 to 10 people in order to beat, and it was pretty difficult. So why don't we run through this, and I'll show you guys what it's all about. Now for the Anixia raid deck, there are three different stages of Anixia, and the entire goal is to defeat the boss and deal fatal damage to the boss. In these terms, you can easily do it with three people. However, like I said earlier, in the old days, it used to take eight to ten people, sometimes five people. And this is a good raid to start people out when um, they're new to the game and they want to get into raiding. It's a lot of fun, and it's probably the most simple raid you can play before the Ice Crown Citadel raid deck. That's simple in its structure, but complex in how it plays. So... Let me show you the decks that I've constructed in order to fight this deck. And these three decks were pre-constructed before I did this raid, and I constructed them all out of cards that were throughout my entire collection. I probably have anywhere from six to 8,000 cards. And it's what's called the Lazy Peon deck. And what a Lazy Peon deck is, is you take common and uncommon cards and put them together. And in my case, because this is from my collection. They're a lot like starter decks, except they're a lot more powerful because of the cards I've collected over the years. So when I, when I constructed these decks, I constructed the ability pool separate, the quest pool together, and all of the allies together. So I have a third allies that have modifiers and deal damage, a third that heal, and a third that protect. So that's all been mixed and mingled into this deck, or into these decks, mind you. And for healing... I randomly chose a druid. For the DPS, I randomly chose a warrior. And for the tank, I randomly chose a paladin. So I'm going to shuffle these decks and let's get started with this raid. To start off the raid, the boss player is going to go first. And for my first hand, I got a pretty good hand here. So the first card I got was Meaningless Exertion, lets me destroy a target ability or interrupt in a target ability card. So I'm going to hang on to that. I've got Foolish Mortals, prevent the next 5 damage that would be dealt to Oni this turn. It's an ongoing ability. How Fortuitous lets me draw a card for each opposing hero. Tooth and Claw will give me an additional plus 5 attack while attacking. Trample will uh, give plus 2 attack to Oni when she's attacking and it's ongoing. And I can exhaust a target ally whenever I attack. And I also have Chattering Scales down here, which lets me destroy all opposing abilities and equipment, and over here is a card that says put 10 whelps into play, but on stage 2 only. So when I begin my turn, I'm going to take one event card from the event pile, and I'm going to play it. And this does use the chain, by the way. You put the top card of the event deck into your resource row face down, and I'm reading it here, quicken and pace. Each opponent will then put the top card of their deck into their resource row face down. So everybody essentially gets an extra resource. So we'll complete that. And we'll never know what that one is. So now that I have two resources, that opens my ability to play How Fortuitous. So I'll play Fortuit How Fortuitous right here. And that will let me draw a card for each opposing hero. Imagine playing that back in the day when there were 8 to 10 people. I'd get like 10 cards. Uh, your maximum hand size for the boss is 10, by the way. So at the end of your turn, if you're over 10 cards, you got to discard down to that. So I'm going to draw three cards. And let's see what we got. Already the game is looking really good for the boss player here, as we have Draconic Rage, which is an ongoing ability that if Oni has plus Oni has plus X attack while attacking, where X is the current stage, it won't do me much good now, but I can hold on to it. The third ability is Learn Your Place Mortal, and you draw cards until you reach your maximum hand size. Nice. And number one, Crush, will allow you to destroy a target ally. So let's get back to the... So now that both of my resources are exhausted and I'm up to nine cards, I can't really do anything right now except attack, and I will choose to attack the DPS. So that will be one to Warax, the warrior. Looking at the DPS's hand, I've got a lot of good cards to choose from, so it looks like I have one, two, three, 
Four uh, allies, two quests, and one ability. So that ability is an ongoing for World Breaker that allows my allies to have Assault 1, which is nice. But over on the top left corner, I've got Grumder Bladebane, and each opposing ally has minus one attack during its controller's turn. That'll stack throughout this deck, and I've put quite a few in them, so that'll be a good modifier if you can keep Grumder out there. So why don't we do that first and play a quest? So I will play my second resource, and actually I can play Ninu as well. So that's two one-drops. And now when Onyxia's Whelps come out, they will do zero damage because they have one attack. So cool, let's go to the Paladin. So the tank got a pretty good hand here as well. I've got a little too many quests, but that's okay. That may prove useful eventually on here. And there's also Atonement that will prevent all damage a target hero or ally would deal this turn, so that's nice. And I can also have um, an ally buffed because it has a Blessing of Defense down here. That gives that attached ally plus five attack while defending, so that's nice. And Keyword Rock Salt's up there, and he, we're going to want to get him out soon. However, he costs three, and I only have two resources down at max by the end of this turn, so there's not much I'm going to be able to do. So let's see what we can do. The best thing we could do right now is place down a resource for the Paladin, so I'll place down Tabards of the Illidari, and I'm going to attach that Blessing of Defense to Grumder Black, Blame, Black Bane, excuse me. So he's a 1-2, however, when he protects, he has a plus 6, so that's really nice. So if Oni decides to attack, she'll have to go through Grumder unless she can destroy Grumder by turn 6. So that's what I'll do, that's all the Paladin can really do, so let's go over to the healer. The healer here has a pretty good assortment of cards, including off-camera, there's a Rejuvenation and a Natural Order which can help to destroy any abilities Anixia may play. Ooh, looks like we also have another Rejuvenation up there at the top. Um, as the Crow flies in this tutorial is kind of useless because it only allows me to look at the target player's hand. If I was playing a game with three other people, that would be pretty handy to see what the boss has, but it looks like we have a Grumder Bladebane down there as well. So what I can do is play No One Can Save You, and we'll pop down Grumder, and that's going to stack with the other Grumder on the field. And now, Anixia's allies have zero attack while attacking. Nasty. So that'll stop the Whelp threat, and for any other future raids, that can also have a pretty good impact for the raiders. So let's do that. Place down my second resource. We'll put down Grumder. And now that modifier will stack. That's all I can really do at this point due to summoning sickness, so now it's the boss's turn. Now the next event comes into play and says I can destroy a target ally, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to pop that Grunder Blaine Bane that just came out. And now Oni has three resources, draw a card. And it looks like I got a Devour, which... If Oni's defending, I could deal 5 melee damage to target attacking hero or ally. So that's cool. So now that I have 3, and I have 9 cards, I don't want to play Learn Your Place Mortal and draw to reach my maximum hand size. So I could play Tooth and Claw. And I will. Which, Oni has plus 5 attack while attacking. That's a nice little buff. So now that that's in play, I have a plus 1 plus five, I have six. I'm going to have to go through that Grumder Bladebane anyway, so I'm going to attack the DPS. Grumder Bladebane will protect that damage. He's going to go bye-bye, but he has plus five while defending, so Oni's going to take six damage. So, there's not much else I can do. All my resources are exhausted as the boss, so we're going to go back to the DP. As this turn starts, there's a Ninu of the Light on the field. And, um, at first I thought her, I was about to say her ability was instant and triggered, however you have to exhaust the card in order to play it. So, we won't do that. I drew another card, a quest, so I'll place it down, and now I've got three. So I could play either Scala of the Somber Watch or Raging Shout. And Scala says this hero has minus one attack for each damage on it. Nice modifier. Oni now has negative six attack. Nasty. So that's been played. Ninu can't attack because her modifier says so. 
So all I can do is end my turn due to summoning sickness. So as the tank, I'm getting a little concerned, not 